G'day all, it's Glenn from Backland Fish here again. I have another little video today in the form of a sort of a mini fish room tour. It seems like the last one I did was well regarded and received, so we'll go again. I've done some work with a, a row of tanks in particular with a view to some breeding projects and there's some interesting fish to have a look at. We'll go through them in a tea. See you soon. So it seems the world can't get enough of fish room tours and updates. So today I'm going to do a quickish video on a, a row of tanks in my, the rack on the left is uh, what I call my rack C. I've got basically five racks in the room and, and uh, number them alphabetically as, as you come into the room. So. Today we'll have a, a run along the middle row of Rack C. Now on, on the Rack C overall, these are my probably prime breeding tanks. We're talking 4x18s in the old language and 3x18s, so 250 litres into about 185 litres. So really, really good solid tanks for, for projects and Primarily I'm trying to produce Tanganyikans in this rack um, and as, as I've mentioned too in, in other videos I, I sometimes hedge my bets by running some peacocks in there with featherfin group cichlids because they just seem to get along okay and I think it really knocks out the risk of hybridisation. Anyway we'll get on with what I'm going to do. Um, I apologise if you hear my knees creaking in the background. I'm going to try and squat down a bit and get us into this height that none of the fish have been fed in this row so the behaviour is going to be a bit up in your face but at least we're going to hopefully get to see everything. Tank number one is the newly acquired colony of Conning's Eye, the Benji Peacock, the Blue Regal Peacock and um, some more fish that belong to the cichlid guy, young Steve, has got himself a young group of Ophthalmo Tilapia Boops Nakondi, the neon stripe. I'm going to call them Boops, I don't go with Boops, so I call them Boops. So they're, they're young fish at five-ish centimetres that have come over from our great mates Bill and Max over in Melbourne, where so many good tangs live and where we've done a lot of work in uh, partnership to try and keep lines of fish running where we can. Um, I expect that the, the boobs will need another few months yet but that that group of fish is working nicely. The, the peacocks aren't too hell for leather. Um, I've got about 12 of the peacock and looks to be three or four boys. With, there has been mouthfuls already that I've, um, I've missed over the last few months just through time of life stuff and being really, really busy. But yeah, it's a 250 odd litre tank there, relatively in control at the moment. Um, it might get a bit different when the boops come, come along on the song. I might have to do some work then on some looking at the, the ratio involved but at this time it's it's happy days everyone's getting along moving along to tank number two this is well if it's had a clean in the last couple of days it may not look so the, this is my group of brevis Lamprologus brevis acola sunspots and I'm just going to try and find them because they do often spook when I get down in front where are you guys I can promise you that there's at least a dozen or fifteen fish in this tank 
ranging in sizes. We've got some little jerbies just in front here. Here we go, here comes a, a player. The, um, the appearance of the tank is pretty off-putting, I guess. The, the sand looks a bit of a mess with that green. I think I've heard the term mulm used in other videos that I've watched overseas, and that's a good word for it. It's, it's pretty gunky, but what I have noticed is that when, when we've got fry about, they seem to do very well in it. So I, I do pull it out occasionally, um, and with the, the same garbage growing on the back walls, um, despite the, the way the tank looks, the water clarity is actually really, really good in there, and, and these little guys are doing quite well. Um, there seems to be a bit of behaviour with the current weather we're having down here in Hobart, which is quite boom or bust. It's, it's um, warm weather into, into snow almost, and obviously the barometer is, is telling these guys that things are on the cards. One thing I've noticed, having the brevis in this, these tanks with the black background, they, they certainly look so much, uh, so much better than other fish from this tank that I sometimes put in the tanks with the blue backgrounds and the, the colour does drop out a bit but certainly plenty of colour in the bellies in these guys in this tank. Very cool little fish. Tank number three. This Sorry, I forgot to mention the last one. These these are my three by 18 tanks now, the next four, and these are really um, where I try and go species only to work on a fish that's been giving me trouble or challenge, um, and maybe I can get away with a not a super big tank. We're looking in a at a group of hippo point salmons in here, not that we're seeing great activity. I had about a dozen and have pulled out a couple of spare males because they've been looking like they should have been doing something for quite some time now and all I was seeing was was boys flexing so I, I took a couple of males out recently plus a few other dither fish that were in there and it certainly left, led to a change in attitude. There's, there's a little girl in there that looks a bit beat up, unfortunately, where um, the, the boys are certainly throwing their weight around. But we've had a we've had a little bit of a run recently with other Victorians in the room, so I'm I'm quite hoping that that we'll get a a bit of um, breeding activity here really, really soon. They're a very, very cool fish these and it's a slightly different sort of colour in the male than another fish that you may see in the hobby. Moving along to the fourth in the row. Now this tank constitutes a project we're working on with a really, really pretty fish, the Neolamprologus. The share eye, and this is the variant from Cana Cana Condi, I think is the, the location. Um, what we have in here is a a couple of fish that were only just barely tolerating each other, whereas where where by like basically one male wasn't killing the other fish, whatever that may be, and we've managed to source a couple more and these have been in this tank for about a week now um, and it it seems that even though the tank is three foot long that the dominant fish has seemingly accepted the two new arrivals 
and they all kind of hang quite happily in this front right corner and for whatever reason they usually keep the outsider up above their head for god knows i don't know why he will not swim down the other end of the tank where he'll get a bit more pace um, but he's not he's not in any peril he's got places to hide up there and he's not getting shredded he's just being kept at bay um, i have got a, a secondary little group around the back where i'm doing the same thing i'm just trying to work with with uh, a dominant fish and a couple of smaller ones to try and get a pair running um, because they are just such a, a strikingly beautiful member of the Neo Lamprologus group and have always held a good value A because they're beautiful but B because I don't think they they breed in in the great numbers that the some of the other variants of the, the princess types do. I, um, I do want to make a video, a species profile on this pretty pretty soon, just purely because of how how beautiful a fish it is, and plus I, I think we're we're seeing some really positive signs, so it might make a, a nice little little extended episode if I can catch footage of the hopefully some some babies getting around. And that brings us up to tank number five. Now this obviously doesn't look quite as pretty as the other tanks. This this one, whilst I've cleaned glass pretty well to, to do some filming today, I haven't done the water change just yet. So the water does have a bit of, I guess, staining. But one of the main reasons I haven't done the, the change, this is a this is a group, by the way, sorry, I forgot to mention, of Chalonochromus brachardi, um, sometimes called the masked jewelry, I think, maybe is a common name, or a masked cichlid. And I've got four adults in here, and the plan always was to identify a pair and then remove the spares and maybe try and go again. I used to have six fish, and I lost one early doors, and then, then another. But they have spawned prolifically and they've taught me something I didn't know about the group in that it looks like they step breed pretty well. There are fry of all sizes in this tank at the moment and there's a lot of them and that's one of the reasons that I haven't done a big water change. Um, there are some new babies scudding around on the bottom here in the front at times. Whether I'm getting them on film I won't be able to tell till later. Um, but it's a tank that's clearly working and once again I've got the mulmy gunk everywhere um, up the walls all around the rock work and they are doing fine on it and quite an interesting juvenile with the prominent stripe horizontally but they lose that when they when they flip over to the adult coloration and they become basically that pale, pale lemony sort of color with the, the mask of Zorro. I'm just stalling for time, waiting for an adult to come out for a bit of a, a bit of a talk, but it looks like they don't want to. I, these guys always seem to react a bit weird to the camera, the adults I've noticed, or of me standing here with something for any length of time. Anyway, hopefully you can see a few of those uh, babies getting around and they're, they're waiting for waiting for dinner. There's lots of them. Ah, uh, there's there's one of our adults. And for whatever reason, I've, like I said, I've never been able to identify the pair. There's always been a dominant male in that corner and I've I think he may breed with two of the females and certainly have made up quite the super colony. So that's that's a quick rundown, middle row of of Rack C. Um, 
trying to keep these videos to around the 10 minute mark so I don't bore you completely to tears and and um, but fill you in on something that's been going on that what I'm working towards I'll, uh, I'll keep working my way around the room and hopefully we'll see you in the next one thanks for watching